Okay, so we're going to get round to some coding. We're going to implement this game loop in Android. And to do that, you need to create another activity class. If you follow ex the exact same steps we did in creating the animation activity Java class and use the name game loop activity 001 instead, we can get straight down to the coding. Here's the game loop activity class file. It should all look very familiar. You can pause the video and copy this if you like. And also don't forget to add the entry in the Android manifest. The game loop activity class is going to have layout helper, just as we did before. I've named it game loop 001 underscore layout view. And this is what it looks like. I'm just going to bring up alongside our previous tutorial. So our activity class extends the surface view and implements runnable. We need a thread. And a lot of this is going to be uh, familiar from our animation tutorial. We're going to need some variables to store our, store our loop values. So I've got some double variables here. Frames per second is going to store our required frames per second, which was 15. We're then going to calculate the frame time in seconds, also convert that to frame time in milliseconds, and the frame time in nanoseconds. And from the loop, we need a place to hold the last frame time. So it's last frame time, end of render time, and delta t. Here we have the can draw and a surface holder from the animation tutorial. In our animation constructor is the place where we can state the required frames a second. And in this way, in further tutorials, we can change it and play around with it. So here I've uh, put 15 frames a second. Frame time is in second is 1 over the frames per second, milliseconds, nanoseconds. Put down some conversions here. You might find that useful. So let's get straight down to the game loop. Here we are initializing the last frame time and the delta t. And inside our loop, we're calling an update delta t, an update function that takes delta t as the argument. This is part of the rendering yellow block. And then we're doing some drawing. Again, another function here. And that's it. That's the end of our render block. So straight after our render block, we want to find out the uh, end of render time. So here it is. The end of render time is system.nanotime. This command returns the time stamp in nanoseconds. So the next step is to calculate delta t. And here we have uh, the frame time in nanoseconds minus end of render time minus the last frame, just as in our diagram. And the next step is to sleep. The sleep method takes a long argument as milliseconds. So you have to do some conversions here. So delta t divided by, what is that, 1 million? And cast it to long. And then your thread will sleep for the delta t you've just calculated. And finally, at the very end, you take a time measurement for the last frame. And that's it. That is your variable delta t game loop. Here's uh, where you can put down your physics calculations in the update. And here is our draw function where we're going to put some uh, drawing methods to draw things onto the screen. The pause and the resume methods look exactly the same as uh, the animation tutorials. You can pause the video here to check and copy if you like. So that's the pause function. That's the resume function. OK, let's run it. So we'll hit save. We'll run. And here's a game loop icon that I've created. I've linked it to the grid view. So if we press that, that will run our script. And it hasn't worked. And uh, you can't fault our logic in our code. And you'll come across this when you're coding. And you'll need to do some investigating. It doesn't look like anything should have broken. So what I've done is to create a statistics method that polls all the variables, all the delta t variables, and outputs it as comments as in the log. Now, if we use that stats directly after the calculation of delta t, save that and run it. If we then attempt to run the game loop, we can go back into Android Studio and look at the comments. So immediately, you can see that uh, our delta t is negative, which shouldn't really be possible. But since we're running Android, and each activity has an activity lifecycle. Um, phone, general phone operations are going to interrupt this loop. And what can occasionally happen is that the render time that you calculate has turned out to be longer than your required frame time. And then when you try and sleep with a negative time, it's errored out. One thing you can do is just to surround that by an if, if delta t greater than zero, then sleep. And on the occasional frame where your delta t is negative, it will skip and your app should keep running. Here's the app. It's a blank screen because we've done absolutely no drawing, but down here you can see that we've got a healthy game loop. Let me just pause that. So here's some uh, sample numbers. And that's all I want to do for this tutorial. I'll go over the effects of varying delta t on the physics 
behind your motion in further tutorials. Thanks for watching.